In this video, we're going to look at four examples in which we apply the alternating series test. Um, so we're going to want to determine whether the following series converge or diverge. Um, the first one is actually an example of the alternating harmonic series. Um, remember that the harmonic series was the sum of 1 over n, so the alternating harmonic series is the sum of negative 1 to either the power of n or n minus 1 or n plus 1 um, times 1 over n. So we're either alternating positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, so notice that here when n is 1, okay, that first term will be positive, so we do have 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth, etc. here. Okay, so this is indeed an alternating series, and it looks like the bn part, the part where we just ignore the sign, is 1 over n. Okay, and that is positive. So what are the two conditions that we have to check? So I'm just going to note this is an alternating series. Okay, so the first condition I have to check is whether bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. In other words, are the bn's decreasing? Okay. Well, we note that bn is equal to 1 over n, and bn plus 1 is equal to 1 over n plus 1. So I need to do a little bit of inequality work to compare those two things. Okay. So notice that for n greater than or equal to 1, n plus 1 is bigger than n, so 1 over n plus 1, we divide by a bigger thing, we'll get something that's smaller than 1 over n. Okay, so we do have the bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn condition being met. Okay, well what was the other condition? The other condition was, is the limit as n goes to infinity of bn equal to 0? Well we see that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is in fact 0. Okay, so then we can say for our conclusion, by our work in 1 and 2, by showing the bn's were decreasing at the limit of the bn's was 0, we can say that the alternating harmonic series does converge by the alternating series test. Okay. And because this test does have, or excuse me, this series has a particular name, um, if the alternating harmonic series appears in future problems, instead of running through this test, you could say that this series, once you've identified it as the alternating harmonic series, converges because it is the alternating harmonic series. Okay, the alternating harmonic series is known to converge, just like the regular harmonic series, the sum of 1 over n, is known to diverge. Okay. So let's look at a few more examples. That's kind of our, our basic example. The alternating harmonic series is a classic example. So what do we have next here? Notice that we're going to be looking at the problems from the beginning that we first just identified as alternating series, and now we're going to apply the alternating series test to these various series. So here I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 e to the 2 over n. If I wanted to confirm it was alternating, I could plug in my values like I did before. So this is e squared minus e plus e to the 2 thirds minus e to the 1 half, etc. Okay, so this is an alternating series with bn equals e to the 2 over n being positive. Okay, so I'm going to have to check two conditions. We're going to have to say, is bn plus 1 um, less than or equal to bn? And we're going to have to say, is the limit as n goes to infinity of bn equal to 0? Okay. Um, because the limit condition is easier to check, it's often a good idea to check condition 2 first, because if that condition fails, then you don't have to go and look at any qualities or anything in condition 1. You know you just have to use another test. So. Let's check condition 2 first here. So I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of my bn, which is e to the 2 over n. We'll notice that as n goes to infinity, 2 over n is going to 0. So this is e to the 0, which is 1. So that's not 0. Okay. So we can't use the alternating series test, because that second condition fails. So we have to think about what else we could do. Well, notice that 
our terms here are ANs. If we look at this as the sum of AN, the AN part is negative 1 to the n plus 1 e to the 2 over n, which appears to be equal to e to the 2 over n positive when n is odd and e, excuse me, negative e to the 2 over n when n is even. Okay, because when is n is even, you'd have n plus 1 is odd, so you'd have a negative um, 1 coming out of that. Okay, well this means that our series here, notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the 2n would be going to 1, the limit as n goes to infinity of negative e to the 2n would be negative 1. Okay, so if our terms are alternating here, then um, our, the terms of our series here are alternately going to 1 and negative 1, which means the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, of the whole, whole original terms here, um, does not exist, okay, because it's oscillating. Oscillates between 1 and negative 1. Okay, so in this case we have to say that the series diverges by the divergence test. Okay. So often, if you find that the limit of the positive part of your terms is not going to zero, that indicates that you should try to use the divergence test. Doesn't guarantee that the divergence test is going to um, work for you, but it does indicate that you should go ahead and try that. Okay, so let's just look at two more examples. We want to see some, some more involved um, kinds of cases. Okay, so here we've got the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n squared over n cubed plus 4. Notice that when n is 1, this would be 1 over 5. When n is 2, I'm going to have negative 4 over, looks like 2 cubed plus 4, then we'll have a positive here, um, 3 squared over 3 cubed plus 4, okay, so just to get an idea of what these, these terms look like here. So this is an alternating series, they are alternating negative, or positive, negative, positive, negative. We have bn equals n squared over n cubed plus 4, and that is clearly positive, because I'm just having adding positive um, powers here of n. So let's look at checking our two conditions. We're going to need to see is bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn. Okay, and we're going to need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of bn. Whoops. And we want to know is that, in fact, equal to 0. Okay, so we'll go ahead and check the limit one first. The other one's going to be longer for us to do. So I have the limit here as n goes to infinity of n squared over n cubed plus 4. Okay, I don't have the same um, power in the numerator and denominator, so we use that trick of dividing by the highest power of n that appears in the denominator. So we're going to divide the, the top and bottom here by n cubed. So this gives us 1 over n over 1 plus 4 over n cubed. We'll notice that 1 over n and 4 over n cubed are both going to 0. So this would be equal to 0 over 1 plus 0 or 0. Okay, so we do have that limit condition being met. Okay, so now we need to know are the bn's decreasing. In terms of inequalities, okay, this would be hard to show. So hard to show bn is decreasing with inequalities. We get uh, quite messier inequalities here when I would like plug in n plus 1 for n here. So instead, you have an alternate way that you can show your bn's are decreasing. We look at the associated function. So we look at f of x equals x squared over x cubed plus 4, okay, and show f prime of x is negative um, for all x 
bigger than some value. Okay, we want to show that the function is eventually decreasing, so we want to show that the derivative is negative for all values after some, some largest uh, critical point value. Okay, so this is similar to what we would do to show um, a function was decreasing with the integral test. Here now we're using um, showing a function is decreasing to show that a sequence is um, excuse me, decreasing. Um, but it's the same procedure here. I'm going to take the derivative. And we see that to take the derivative, I'm going to need the quotient rule. So that's going to be the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over that bottom function squared. Okay. So what does this leave us with? Well, we have 2x to the 4th plus 8x minus 3x to the 4th, okay, all over x cubed plus 4 squared. So this gives us 8x minus x to the 4th over x cubed plus 4 squared, okay. So we want to know where is that um, numerator here equal to 0. We'll notice I can factor out an x. That's 8 minus x cubed. Um, over x cubed plus 4 squared. Okay, so we can see that f prime of x equals 0, where that numerator is 0, so that's either where x is 0 or where x is equal to 2. Okay, so notice that if we make a, a sign chart here, that if we plug in something bigger than 2, like 3, I will get a negative numerator here and a positive denominator, so that will be negative. So we see that f prime is less than 0 for x greater than 2, okay? So that means f is decreasing, okay, for um, x greater than 2, okay? If the uh, derivative is negative, then f is decreasing after that point. So we can say so our sequence here, bn, is decreasing starting at the next integer value. So for n greater than or equal to 3, since we said it was decreasing for x strictly greater than 2, bn has to be decreasing for n greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so we were able to show that the bn's are decreasing by showing that the associated function is decreasing. We showed that the terms themselves go to 0. Okay, so for our conclusion we can say so by 1 and 2. Okay. Um, the series that we were looking at in this problem converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so you want to keep in mind that when you have a more complicated BN, okay, um, it can be a lot easier um, to show that your function is decreasing by showing the derivative is negative after some point than trying to prove some messy inequalities um, that you might have some trouble showing are, are true. Okay, So let's just look at one final example here. Here I have a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of sine of n plus 1 half times pi all over 1 plus root n. Okay, So if this series appeared maybe not within the alternating series, um, section, you might not immediately know this is alternating, but whenever you're trying to investigate a series a little bit further when you're not quite sure what test to use, it's good to just plug in the first couple of values for n to see what the terms look like. So notice when n is 0 here, I'll have sine of pi over 2, and we know that sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this would end up being 1 over 1. When n is 1, I'd end up with sine of 3 pi over 2, and we know that that's a negative 1. So this would be negative 1 over 1 plus root 1, okay, which would end up being um, 1 half. Okay. When n is 2, this would be sine of um, 5 pi halves, which would again bring us to 1, okay, and that would be over 1 plus root 2. Okay, So we see that this series is actually the same as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, excuse me, of negative 1 to the n all over 1 plus root n. Okay, so you can see this sort of hidden alternating series with both cosine of certain multiples of pi and sine of certain multiples of pi. Okay, so this is alternating with the bn part being equal to 1 over 1 plus root n, okay, and 
that the bn's here are clearly greater than zero. Okay, so now we gotta check our two conditions of the alternating series test. We wanna know is bn plus one less than or equal to bn? And we wanna know is the limit as n goes to infinity of bn equal to zero? Okay, well the limit part's pretty easy to check here. We take the limit of one over one plus root n. That denominator is getting very, very large. So that limit will be going to zero. Okay, so what about the inequality part? Well, we don't have um, too messy a bn in this case. bn would be 1 over 1 plus root n, and bn plus 1 is 1 over 1 plus root n plus 1, okay, when we replace n by n plus 1. Um, I sort of think of the inequality as being not too bad to, to show when either you have um, the same numerators or the denominators are the same, because then you have a, a starting point, okay? So here, notice that we have the same numerators and different denominators. So I'm going to try to build up to the inequality that I want by starting with building up that um, denominator. So notice that for n bigger than or equal to 0, n plus 1 is definitely bigger than n. Okay. So root n plus 1 is bigger than root n, okay, because the square root function would preserve that, that inequality. Um, if I look at adding 1 to both sides, okay, we still have um, 1 plus root n plus 1 is bigger than 1 plus root n. And then if we do the reciprocal, we know that that switches the direction of the inequality. So 1 over 1 plus root n plus 1 would be less than 1 over 1 plus root n. Okay, and we were able to show this with the, the strict, but we could have just put greater than or equal to or less than or equal to in there. And so then we do have the condition that we want with bn plus 1 being less than or equal to bn. Okay, so for our conclusion, we can say so by 1 and 2. Okay, our series that we were looking at in this example here converges by the alternating series test, and you can abbreviate that AST. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on these examples applying the alternating series test.